Sony's first official foray into the Pro Controller scene has finally arrived with the DualSense Edge, a $200 answer to Microsoft's $180 Xbox Elite Series 2. Its design immediately feels familiar, but it comes standard with all the trappings you'd expect of a Pro Controller at this price. Interchangeable back buttons, adjustable analog sticks, added grips, and customizable profiles. However, what makes it stand out is the deep integration of hardware and software at the system level that third-party controller makers simply can't match. And the ingenuity of the new function buttons make customizing and swapping between profiles second nature. The DualSense Edge's design doesn't deviate much from that of the standard DualSense controller, making the transition from one to another a seamless upgrade with a minimal learning curve. That being said, it's packed with plenty of exciting tech and makes high-end controller features more accessible to the wider PlayStation audience. Everything comes neatly packed in a two-toned hard shell case that matches the white and black PS5 and is made from what appears to be the same plastic as the controller itself. Inside, you'll find the DualSense Edge front and center, as well as a small selection of accessories and interchangeable bits. There are two different back buttons, a half dome shaped option and a lever style option, as well as two different convex analog stick heights to replace the default sticks with. Additionally, there's a 9.1 foot long braided USB-C cable, as well as a small plastic mechanism that can be added to the top of the DualSense Edge to ensure the cable doesn't accidentally get pulled out during gameplay. There's even a small flap on the back of the case that allows you to charge the controller while it's inside. The back of the DualSense Edge sports some fancy pro-level features. Both analog triggers feature stop sliders to reduce the travel distance with three presets available. You can choose between the full range, medium level range, and a short range for more of a hair trigger activation. You can also adjust individual dead zones for each analog trigger in the software settings. You can choose between lever style or half dome back buttons, both of which are constructed with a premium metal build. The levers are longer and shallower following the curvature of the controller and will be familiar to people who have used pro style controllers like the Xbox Elite. The half dome alternatives on the other hand have a unique shape that's similar to an analog stick cut in half. They require more intentionality to press but feel much sturdier than the lever style options and less likely to see any accidental presses. One of the DualSense Edge's killer features is the fully replaceable analog stick modules. While stick drift hasn't plagued the DualSense quite as much as Nintendo Switch's Joy-Cons, it still does occur and it's massively frustrating having to replace an entire controller when the problem surfaces under your thumbs. The DualSense Edge sidesteps this problem by letting you entirely swap out either stick module if and when it starts to fail. In addition to these new pro-level upgrades, all of the standard DualSense features are here, including haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, built-in microphone, and more. To further distinguish itself from the default controller, the DualSense Edge has a slightly edgier look with black face buttons, a black D-pad, and an all-black touchpad adorned with the iconic PlayStation symbols. This touchpad feels a bit more robust and has more of a squared off edge. These changes are subtle enough that the DualSense Edge does work with the existing DualSense charging station, so there's no need to buy a new one. Speaking of charging, one area that didn't see any substantial improvement is the life of the built-in rechargeable battery, which is something that's been a common complaint of PlayStation's controllers for years. During our testing, we received a low battery notification after about four and a half hours of gameplay, and the controller lost power just shy of five and a half. That's not great. It means you'll always want to top it up between play sessions. The most notable physical change between the DualSense Edge and the standard DualSense is the addition of a function button below each analog stick. Holding down the function button brings up a small on-screen overlay menu that shows you your four assigned profiles, one for each face button, as well as the option to create a new profile or adjust headphone volume and audio mix. When swapping to a different profile, the controller emits a small burst of haptic feedback and a notification lets you know the active profile has changed. It's quick and fairly non-intrusive to your gameplay, but can be further customized or turned off completely if you desire. Creating, editing, and swapping profiles is extremely intuitive and the slick interface makes for an engaging experience throughout. The custom profile section in the settings app, which by the way, you can quickly jump to via the function button, lets you view your four assigned profiles and hovering over each one displays which buttons and settings have been adjusted at a glance, in case your naming convention wasn't descriptive enough. 
There's no limit to the number of unassigned profiles, so you're free to experiment with all sorts of custom assignments before calling your favorites up to the majors in your shortcut slots. The PS5's interface isn't perfect, and at times can be downright baffling, but Sony nailed it with the approachability and simplicity of the DualSense Edge experience. At nearly triple the price of the standard DualSense controller, the $200 price tag for the DualSense Edge is a hefty one for most casual players. That being said, there's a ton of fantastic tech packed into a controller that's virtually the same size and shape as the one you're already used to. The function buttons work extremely well to let you quickly create, tweak, and bounce between custom profiles, and the user interface is slick and intuitive. The interchangeable back buttons are comfortable and feel like a natural extension of the controller. And with easily replaceable analog stick modules, you won't have to worry about replacing the entire controller if you experience joystick drift. Our one complaint is a lack of substantial battery life improvement, a long-standing weak point of PlayStation controllers. But overall, this is a fantastic debut for Sony's first pro-level controller. For more tech reviews, check out our review of the Xbox Elite controller. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. Thank you.